Welcome to Morning and Sweet Neramas. Now today it's time. Well, as you can see, it's Christmas, so it's Christmas time. <laughs> it's time to do the top 10 games of 2017. And I'm Joseph, I'm here with Draco, and we are going to go through this list. And uh, before we get going though, I do want to mention that the, it's been really hard. I played so many good games this year, it's been a good year for, for board gaming. Wow, uh, I played 39 games from 2017. So these are the 10 that I like the most, and in order of course. And then of course there's a bunch of games that I didn't play, I mean it's all about time, it's about getting the games and all that. I have a bunch of them sort of not played yet, it's on my, on my shelf. Um, so I'm going to do another list in just a few days here, where it's going to be top 10 games of 2017 that I want to play, that I haven't played, just like I did last year. Uh, I think that was a good concept, because there's no way I can play all the games that I want from from a year, especially since a lot of them come out in, at Essen uh, in October, so it's not that much time before Christmas and before, before doing these lists. So, uh, also, I want to do some honorable mentions. Oh, this hat feels a bit weird. I wanted to keep up with Draco, you know, he has his hat and all, but uh, let's skip that. Um, I want to do some honorable mentions. I have two expansions here because I'm not including expansions on the list, of course. I do want to mention Venus and Next for Terraforming Mars. And this is empty because you can fit the whole expansion in the core box, which is also awesome. Um, and this is just amazing. Uh, basically, it adds... Well, the game is already great, as you know, uh, that's my opinion. If you've been watching my top 10 of all time and all that stuff, I love uh, Terraforming Mars, but this added not just more of the same, there's some cards in there that adds to the, you know, mechanics, to the feeling, but also adds to the Venus board, which gives you a fourth sort of condition. Well, it's not a condition to finish the game, but it's sort of a fourth thing you can work on to increase. It gives you some ways to get TR in another way than usual. And also, I really like, one thing that I really like about this one is the world government phase. Uh, where every round the world government is going to affect one of these parameters and um, sort of qu quicken up the game basically because otherwise the game would have uh, dragged on because of the Venus board. So, uh, and especially in the solo game, I really like the world government because it gives you some more tactical options to set yourself up. And, and also in the multiplayer game, I played it just uh, today, and uh, that was really nice to be able to stop an opponent from getting a bonus. Basically, no, yeah, I like that. Venus Next, awesome expansion. Get it if you like Terraforming Mars. And the second one I want to mention is for Nations the Dice game, Unrest. Uh, really, really cool stuff. Uh, this is, I mean, this is better than the base game. Uh, the design of this this expansion is just so amazing. I'm so amazed by it. Um, it for me, it brought the game. I, I really love Nations the Dice game. It's on my top ten. Uh, I really love it, but it brought the game from a 9 to a 10, basically. Uh, it's not that many games that are given a 10, but now with the expansion, that's a 10 for me. I mean, the base game was good, it was all fun, but it was kind of lightweight, a bit gateway-ish. With the expansion, it gives it more complexity, but it's not too much. It's like it gets medium weight, more gamish game. Uh, some new things in here that is just so great. Things that I was like, you know thinking that, oh, I would like to have that in the game, and it, now I have it. <laughs> so it's just amazing, this Nations the Dice game, Unrest, really recommend it. So uh, with that said, I think it's time to go straight for number 10. Alright, so number 10 for 2017 is a game called Valletta. Uh, Valletta is a light Euro game, lightish Euro, you have deck building in it, which I really like, that's the sort of core mechanic of the game. You're also sort of getting resources, building buildings, getting points, yeah, the standard Euro stuff, but the thing that I really like about Valletta is sort of the, the combination of the deck building, and it's really slow deck building, like in Great Western Trail, uh, during the game you just add I don't know, a, few, a bunch of, it's not that many cards that you add in your deck, but they are really important, and the way you can set up different strategies are really interesting. 
So uh, Valletta is my number 10 and I can really recommend you to check it out if you haven't. So number 10 and let's head to number 9. So number 9, and number 9 is a game called Near and Far. Uh, Near and Far is the follow-up, sort of, uh, from Above and Below. Um, Near and Far though is a totally different game, in the, it's sort of an adventure game, it still has the Euro mechanics. You go to town, you have a bit of worker placement basically, where you move your, well you have one, one guy, that you, your character that you move around to do different actions at different places. But then when you feel ready you go out into the world, uh, you, you have sort of a party with you of, of adventurers, followers that you have recruited. They give you different benefits. You go out into the world and you can fight uh, monsters. You do quests, which is really fun because then the other player, uh, or the player to your left or right, whatever it is, uh, reads from this book of adventures or quests. And you get these options to choose from how you want to act, how you want to react. Do you want to do a skill test? Do you want to fight? Um, you can sort of somehow guess that, okay, if I do this, I might go, because you have a reputation track going from, you know, bad to good, you can sort of guess that if I do this, if I rob this person I meet or whatever, I'll probably get, lose reputation. But maybe you want to lose reputation because there's certain items, artifacts that you have on hand that you can be, be playing out and get your benefits as well, and they might require you to have a minus reputation. So. And there's so much in it, uh, there's like a campaign, and it's really well made because you can play it as a, just like a one-time game, you play, set it up, play with some friends, or you can play it as a campaign of 10 games where you're sort of developing a story basically, or you can play it as a campaign of 10 games where your character, depending on which one you chose, because there's a bunch different, that character will sort of evolve and the quest will adapt to that character so really interesting stuff i am playing a campaign together with martin we've been i think we're on number four out of ten or something and it's really fun i mean you calculate the score so the end game score like i'm in the lead right now but i don't know if i will be after 10 games we'll see near and four really beautiful game as well i should mention that just love the artwork love the Oh, I like I like pretty much everything about it. The only thing complaint I could have is that the combat is sort of the well. Let's say I have four swords and I meet a bandit and he's level eight, and I need to roll one die and get to eight. If I don't get to eight, then I can spend heart, which is something that I have. I can get back as I spend some heart to increase my roll. Maybe that's a bit too lightweight. I think it would be more fun if there were more steps to the combat not just roll one die that's that that might bring it down a little bit for me but it's still a great game so near four that's my number nine so number eight uh this war of mine this is a game that i talked a lot about in my top 50 because it's in there as well uh, I'm not gonna go into all those steps of sort of analyzing the game and, and how it works. It's really thematic. You're playing as a civilian during a war. Uh, it's based on the PC or the video game, which it, it does a really good job of, of transforming that into a board game. And this War of Mine is, is really heavy in theme, in, in what happens in the game, but it's not that heavy in actual mechanics and playing it. It's really easy to get into and learn it. And um, yeah, really fun stuff. Yeah, well, fun, but really, really evolve. Uh, you know, you get, you get, um, you get into the game. You get into the theme, and you really care about your characters and, and trying to make them survive because that's what it's all about. Um, the only downside to the game is how they made the rule book. That is a bit weird, to be honest. It's like, well, you can just start playing, and we'll t we'll teach you as you play. It's a good idea, and it works pretty good, but. The, I would have, I don't know, I would have preferred to have a normal rule book where I can just look up things, look up rules. Now it's like you have this thick book where all the, it's like near and far, you get, so you meet an encounter and you get to choose what happens and depending on what you choose, something else happens or so. And in that one, there's also rules scattered out through the book in the squares. So this it's really weird to look up rules. I don't know why they did that, but the, it's still an amazing game. I can really recommend this war of mine uh, i think it's my favorite co-op game actually as well um i think so yeah 
<laughs> so that's my number eight, this war of mine. And now for my number seven, it's called Anachrony. Came out pretty early this year, 2017. It's a pretty heavy Euro style game. Well, it's kind of heavy. It's a lot of setup, a lot of things to a lot of stuff, but it's, the stuff looks really nice. It's a really good components, looks really great on the table. You really get into the theme, which is like worker placement with tra time travels. You and you have these to go out and do your worker placement, your workers, which are these small little tiles, they have to go in a suit. Now in, in the if you in the base game you don't get the suit, you just get like a cardboard piece that you put your worker on and you go out into the world because there's radi radiation and stuff. It's like post-apocalyptic, right? So then, but if you get the uh, miniature pack for it as well, uh, you get this really, really big and nice and detailed miniatures that you put your worker in. I just love that stuff. I uh, started painting them, but I, I sort of never have time to finish it, but it's <coughs> really cool stuff, really love those miniatures. And the gameplay is solid, the gameplay really has a lot of good stuff in it where you, you sort of have the different types of workers, so you have the engineers, they can they are good at doing some stuff, but not other, they can't do some other stuff, like research I think. You have the scientist, you have the, the ge genius, which can is like a wild card, he can do anything. And you have the administrator who can is good at recruiting new workers for you. So I love that stuff where you have different types of workers in the worker placement game that do different things. Also, I like how when they have done their thing, you put them out and they did a thing on the board, they get tired, they go sleeping, and then you have to spend an action or time or effort to make them wake up again so they are ready to work again. So it's not just it's not just the easy worker placement part, so it's pretty complicated, you have different leaders, different factions, they have sort of different goals. Oh, there's so much in this game. Go check out my round trip if you haven't. Really a good one, I really love this one, and it's one that I really want to get to the table more often, because I played it a bunch solo during the fall here, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get this to the table for multiplayer soon as well. So Anachrony is uh, my number 7 of 2017. So my number six, and I must say that these are really close. It's hard to separate these from, you know, uh, which one is seven, which one is six. But anyway, number six is Charter Stone. Uh, it's a game that I haven't played that much, but it really impressed me, and I really love the idea of Charter Stone, of a legacy worker placement building game, where you build buildings, you gather resources. Um, and it's legacy style, so you're, you're evolving as you go, the map is in, you know, evolving, so you put out stickers, really cool stuff. You have the Atom as well, you can play it even up to six players, um, and so on. And I really like that you, there's a bumping mechanic in it, so if Draco sends his meeple somewhere, and I'll go there, then he gets the meeple back. That's also one thing, speaking of anachrony and worker placement stuff, what I like different workers. In, uh, in Shorter Stone you have another thing that I really like is that the workers doesn't come home automatically. You have to spend an action or a turn to bring them home. But if someone else goes to your spot where they are, you get them home for free or that guy. So that's just an awesome mechanic. I wish uh, that uh, that's something I would like to see in more worker placement games. And uh, I'm really looking forward to continuing my journey uh, in uh, Shorter Stone. So Shorter Stone. Uh, really impressed me, and that's my number six. And my number five of 2017 is another legacy game, actually. It's called Pandemic Season 2, Legacy Season 2. Um, now, I, did, I didn't play the Pandemic uh, Legacy Season 1 at the time, when it uh, sort of uh, came out and so on. I didn't have a gaming group that would sort of solid play, you know, all these what is like up to 24 even or like 18, 18 I think in, in most of the cases, games. So I was like thinking that there's no way I'm going to get to play this with the group. And there were a lot of other games I was playing and so on. So I actually, what I did was I actually watched the Dice Towers playthrough of season one, uh, all those uh, what is like, must be more than 18 hours, a lot of hours. 
had a lot of fun uh, watching it. I mean, it was like, you know, they did it. They, they did that playthrough really well, so it, you really got to feel like you're part of the game as a viewer. Really good one. Uh, I love the Dice Towers uh, playthroughs, uh, when they do these live playthroughs and so on, it's just so good. Um, so when the Season 2 came recently, I was so excited because now I knew that I had a few guys I could play it with. So we are sort of halfway into the Season 2 campaign, but I can tell already that it's, I mean, it's just a, such a good game. Uh, I can't talk too much about it because it's so spoiler uh, risk there. But uh, yeah, awesome game, Pandemic Legacy Season 2, and that's why it's my number 5. Now, number 4 was a bit of a surprise, actually, I didn't expect to like this. I don't know, maybe I did. Anyway, my number 4 is Nusfjord, Uwe Rosenberg's game for 2017, basically. Well, he did in just summer as well, I haven't played that one yet, though. That's one that's uh, on my shelf. Uh, but Nusfjord is so great, so wonderful. You have these Norwegian fishing villages, or a village that you're in. The main resource, the main currency in the game is not coins, it's fish. So you have these little fish meeples, awesome. Uh, you try to take care of the elders in the, in the village, so you have to feed them if you take care of them. But then also they will give you benefits and you build buildings, you clear out forest, you have this sort of, um, you have this like, um, well, like stock system where you sort of have some shares and you can, they can be used so that you get more fish or someone else can grab your shares in some cases and they get fish from you at the start of every round. Uh, I was a bit uh, nervous about that one. I was like, why did they, why did he include the, the stock thing here? I don't. It doesn't. It didn't sound like it would fit the theme and the gameplay. But it's okay. It's not a big part of the game. The main game is, you know, building and gathering resources, uh, building boats, getting more fish, and building an engine and so on. Really fun stuff. And uh, I haven't played it solo yet, though. That's something I'm looking forward to. I'm going to do that soon uh, in a live play I think and so like co op Friday or something we're going to do News Fjord solo because I think that's that, that looks to be really fun as well. So News Fjord um from Ever Rosenberg is my number four. And now my number three is I don't think this is a big surprise to anyone. It's Civilization a New Dawn. New Civilization game, I really, really love the, the old one from 2010, or old, but anyway, uh, the board game, Civilization board game. Uh, but this one uh, sort of took Civilization and compressed it so you can play it in like two hours. You actually can, which is amazing, like two, three hours, um, depending on how slow people are choosing their movements, of course. Um, but yeah, it's so good. It's a little, they sort of abstracted away a lot of the fiddly stuff that the old game had, which I liked in a way, but it took like a whole day. Um, and and also the sort of combat system, the armies are sort of abstracted away. You have control instead, so you have control tokens. So they both act sort of as a way to get closer to your enemies. You can attack them, but they also serve the purpose of sort of grabbing your um, resources on the map. And, and defending yourself up against the barbarians. I love what they did with barbarians in, in Civilization in New Dawn. Actually, me and Martin, we, we played a lot like uh, a year ago or so. We played a lot of uh, Civilization, the board game, and so much that we, we, we sort of implemented our own house rule thing, where we put in this sort of a system for the barbarians to move around, because they don't do that in that game normally. And also, so they respawned. And the funny thing is, this is just exactly what they did in A New Dawn. You roll a die and it's a direction and so on. Just what we did uh, as a house rule before that. Uh, yeah, it really works really well. Uh, it looks great on the table. Uh, the only thing... I have a bit of an issue, just like with Near and Far, that the combat is just roll a die. Uh, you have a combat value to, from the base and then you roll a die on top of that. It's okay, but I think there's other ways to do combat that would have been more interesting. And also, there's no exploration in the game. Uh, the map, you see all the map from the start, which is not really okay for a Civilization game. You should be have those clouds, you know, the fog of war. But I don't know, I, 
it, that's not a big issue. I'm okay with it and not having the exploration part. Uh, really fun stuff, really great game. My number three, Civilization A New Dawn. And so my number two of 2017. This is a game that I think is on a lot of people's top 10, maybe even in the first <laughs> slot. Uh, it's Gloomhaven. Gloomhaven is just amazing. Um, yeah. I don't even know what to say. You know, it's a dungeon crawler, but it has your mechanism. You play cards, you don't roll any dice. Instead, you have your cards, that is sort of your life or your time left in the dungeon because when you run out of cards, uh, you get exhausted, your character is out. And this way to retrieve your cards after you play them, but yeah, there's, there's so much going on in Gloomhaven. But in in its core, basic core, it's you go into the dungeon, you have your characters, just like I mean, I, I almost feel like it's sort of Diablo the board game in some ways and I love Diablo the, the computer games and I'm just you know I'm just I'm just scratching at the surface here and I've just played a few times uh, I did some live plays so you can go check that out if you want to but um, it's so good game is so great I think this one will if it keeps being this good as it is now all through the campaign because I'm going to play all that campaign on my, on my own on solo game uh, now I'm actually playing with three characters, which I think that's uh, so that's kind of cool. So I can get more combinations and all that. I have like one healer, more mostly healer, um, and then I have my sort of brutal Draco has his brute and so. Um, so so Gloomhaven is an awesome game, and I think it might end up being one of my all-time favorites in the future if it keeps its promise as it looks now. So that's my number two of 2017, Gloomhaven. <laughs> And finally, my number one of 2017, and this is no surprise to anyone. If you've been watching my top 10 games of all time, if you haven't, you should go check it out. Uh, click the eye up there. But uh, if you have watched it, you know that uh, my top one game of all time, well, I'm spoiling it if you haven't watched it, but it's still fun. Gaia Project uh, came out this year, and for me, that just you know blew away all the competition, really, for the number one slot. Now, sure. Terraforming Mars is pretty close for all time, but for 2017, that's the Gaia Project, no doubt. I uh, played the beta testing together with some friends, with Andreas and those guys. Uh, we just enjoyed it so much, and I was so happy to get it from Essen, so I have the German version. I have my name on the box, which is kind of cool, while well, Andreas is there as well, of course, the, all the beta testers. Uh, Gaia Project is just so amazing. I mean, I talked a lot about it before. I did. Uh, gameplay run through with Draco, I did a solo playthrough, I did a live play where I talk about all the different things in the game, the different factions and so on, you can check all that out on the channel if you want to. But I just want to mention that Gaia Project, I think it's the game that is going to be there for a long time, maybe not number one in, in, in years to come because you never know what comes out, right? Um, but I think it's going to be in my top 10 for a long, long time. And uh, I mean, I love Terra Mystica before that. And um, basically, it took the things that I didn't like about Terra Mystica. I was, well, that was a bit, yeah, you could get blocked in. You have this cult track that doesn't really mean anything thematically. Um, and and oh, I, you couldn't play like a two player game in Terra Mystica, really, because the map didn't scale at all. All that is fixed in Gaia Project <laughs> and more. There's stuff in there that I couldn't even imagine that I wanted. And now I'm just so happy that it's there. Oh, it's just so great game. So great game. Gaia Project, my top, my number one for 2017 and my number one in all time as well. Uh, right now at least. That would change, of course, with the years to come. Uh, I mean, a year ago, I don't think, I don't think a year ago that I even heard about Gaia Project. Uh, I'm not sure where I, when I heard about it the first time. But that's my number one Gaia Project and I hope you enjoy this top 10 of 2017. Now, in a few days, there will be a top 10 games of 2017 that I didn't play yet, but I want to play. Uh, so I'll do it just like I did last year. Uh, I think that format is great because there's no way I can play all the games that I want. Uh, like I would say to my friends, too many good games and too few hours in every day, basically. I mean, there's no time uh, to, to, well, especially multiplayer. I have an easier, it's easier in solo play. I can play... Uh, 
a lot more than but uh, getting getting it to the table it's not just fun to always play new games either in the gaming group because you know, then there's always teaching games always teaching games always new stuff always looking at rules it's good to play some of those classical games as well uh, classical but today i play terraform remorse in my gaming group uh, I, I taught two new people actually but for me it was nice to have a game that I know everything. <laughs> I don't have to look up any rules. I don't have to think too much about it. I just I can just play and have fun. And uh, yeah, so so um, check that out in a few days. Top ten games of 2017 that I want to play. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all the support for the channel. I'm so happy for this year. It's been going just you know my my analytics on YouTube is just going crazy. It's going so well. I'm so happy. Um, I'm so happy for the, the community that I'm really starting to build with people really getting uh, involved in in you know in my videos in the, everybody loves Draco basically. Uh, so it's just so fun. Thank you so much for all the support, and I hope we will have a great 2018 together with a lot of new games to come, a lot of new videos and live plays and run throughs and solo playthroughs and unboxings and. We might even get some figure painting going. I think Martin is going to start his series of figure paintings. That I look forward to that. Uh, really, uh, and Draco just as well, because Draco will be in there in a bit as well. So, thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and morning. Whenever you're watching this, take care. Bye bye. Be like Draco. Follow Board Games with Niramas on Facebook at BGW Niramas. Board Games with Niramas is sponsored by Alara Games in Sweden.